Hey, what's up everyone? John of the Geek here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install Windows 8 Developer Preview as a virtual machine using VirtualBox. Uh, before we install all of this, we have to make sure that our CPU supports virtualization technology. So if you have an AMD uh, processor, uh, there's a little program that you can download here to uh, check to see if your, sub your CPU supports that. And then on the Intel side, there's a list here of uh, the... Uh, all the processors that Intel has that supports uh, virtualization um, technology and so I'll provide the links to these two in the description right so uh, the first thing we're gonna do is uh, start the download of uh, Windows uh, 8 and so I'm gonna go ahead and download the 64-bit version which is a 3.6 gig uh, download. There's another version that has uh, developer tools included with it and it's 4.8 gigs. I'm going to skip that. And if uh, you don't have a whole lot of resources to allocate, then I suggest you use the 32-bit uh, version. But for now, I'm just going to start the 3.6 uh, 64-bit the uh, version. So you click on that and it's going to install. Next, we'll uh, download and install uh, VirtualBox. So we'll go ahead and click and save that. Right, so once you've downloaded and installed everything, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to start up VirtualBox. Right, and we're going to create a new virtual machine. So go ahead and click on New then next right and then we're going to call this Windows 8 and uh, since there isn't a uh, version of Windows 8 on the list here we'll just go ahead and choose Windows 7 and click on next and the memory we're going to allocate is I suggest a minimum of uh, 2 gigs if you're on um, if you're using the 64-bit version and I'm going to go ahead and give it four gigs of space right 4096 and then for the startup disk I'm going to create a new hard disk and uh, we'll just leave it as a virtual box disk image and I'm going to leave it at dynamically allocated meaning it doesn't allocate all of this space but as it fills up uh, it will adjust the size to the uh, operating system Right, and um, if you're using the 64-bit version, the minimum requirements uh, for hard drive space should be 20 gigs. But I suggest you go to like maybe 30 gigs or 40 gigs, so that uh, you could download and install some programs and see how it works um, in um, Windows 8. So I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, 40 gigs here. Right, so once you're ready, click on Create create again we're still not done yet what we need to do is actually change some settings right so uh, once you start it up here you click on settings and uh, you can leave all of this alone under system here I'm gonna uncheck the floppy I don't really need that anymore processor here I'm gonna allocate uh, two processors I suggest you uh, allocate at least two for it to run smoothly for the display, I'm going to enable 2D and 3D acceleration, and then I'm also going to allocate 256 megabytes of memory. Now for storage, here's the important part. Um, we have to mount the ISO file that we downloaded. So you click on the, uh, under IDE controller, click on uh, empty, and then click on this little disk, and then choose a virtual CD DVD drive and this is the ISO file that we had just downloaded so I'll click on that and click on open right so now it mounts it now when you start up the uh, virtual box it will uh, mount and install from this disk audio you can leave alone for the uh, network card I like to use a bridge adapter so that it treats it as its own network card and pretty much everything else you can leave alone. Go ahead and click on OK. 
now we're ready to start it. So once I click on start it opens up a new window here and this is the installation process. Right so we're presented with the uh, installation menu here and it's pretty much straightforward just like uh, Windows 7. Click on install now. For the most part uh, the installation process is closely resembles the uh, Windows 7 procedures. All right now we're at the uh, licensing. Click on accept. I like to do custom. I'm going to go ahead and uh, this is the uh, allocated space that we created earlier. Click on drive options and click on new and apply and OK. Right, so now it's created a uh, system reserve that's usually your boot partition and then uh, partition 2 is your uh, is what you want to install on. Let's so click on next. This process is uh, fairly quick. It should take about uh, 15 to 20 minutes. So we'll be back once it's finished. All right, so now that it's rebooted itself, it's finished the installation process. Now we got to go in to configure it. And so the name for the PC that it's asking for, I'm going to call it the Geek VM. And I'm going to use the Express Settings username. I'll just call it the Geek. No password because I'm a rebel. Right, so what we're presented here with is the Metro UI. This is their new interface. It's not exactly permanent. It's very uh, Xbox Live or Windows Media Center like. And uh, if you want to go back to the traditional desktop, right down at the bottom here where it says desktop, click on that. We've got our uh, standard uh, Windows 7 type. Right, so that's pretty much it. I uh, hope you enjoy. Please uh, subscribe, comment, like, dislike the videos. Uh, the next video that I'll be doing after this, which I'll probably put a link to, um, is a video on connecting to this desktop, this virtual machine, using a remote desktop program called Splashtop and uh, viewing it on your iPad. Thanks for watching. John of the Geek out. Peace.